Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm gonna show you how to install LED lights like these in your truck bed. That way when you open up the tailgate, everything lights up and you can see it. Now I know not everyone has a pickup truck, so don't worry. You could use this guide to install the exact same LED lights anywhere in your car or truck, like underneath your hood. So when you pop the hood open, it lights up under here and you could work on it. And in order to show you how well this install works, let's shut the lights. Okay, now with the underhood lights, I have it set up so you click a button, and when you click that button, look at that, that looks so good. Now you can easily work under the hood, no problem at all. Come back over here to shut it off, and you are good to go. Now with the truck bed, all you have to do is open the tailgate, and voila, check that out. You can see everything you need to get to in your truck bed. And then all you have to do is close it, and it shuts off. But since I already did this on my truck, we need to install bed lights on a different truck, a Ford Raptor, but not just any Ford Raptor. I'm Jacob, I'm Yuri. and we're Chris fixing my truck. So these are my friends and fellow YouTubers, Jacob and Yuri from the YouTube channel, The Straight Pipes. And they drove all the way from Canada so we could install some bed lights and make an awesome video to show you guys how it's done. So let's get started. Now the goal for this project is for it to be fun and simple. We're gonna be doing this at home in our driveway with common products and tools. Actually, this is all you're gonna need and it's gonna cost you less than $30. Let me show you what you need. So we're gonna be using a fuse because you always wanna fuse your projects. We're gonna be using an on off switch so we can turn the lights on and off. Here's a magnetic on and off switch so when you close the bed, it's off. When you open the bed, it's on. And then we have some white LEDs. Again, common hand tools with a wire strippers gonna need a multimeter, soldering gun, we have 14 gauge wire, always put your wire in a wire protector, and then I have random connectors just in case you might need them, they're inexpensive as well. I'm gonna link all this stuff in the description so you can easily find it. If you see something you wanna use, it'll be linked below. As always, put on your safety glasses before we begin, and the most important thing to do is to write out a wiring diagram. So you wanna make sure that you have everything all set up. We know we're going from the front where the battery is, we're running a power wire to the tailgate, and then we know how we're gonna run our LED lights. So these are our LED lights around here in the bed, and then we have our switch, which is right here, which goes to the magnetic switch, which goes to the ground. This will make a lot more sense once we get started. Now I don't want you guys who don't know how to wire stuff to get discouraged. This is very, very simple. If you don't know how to wire something in like an LED light, do not worry. It is very easy. All you have to do is remember, the red wire here is the positive wire that goes to the positive wire on the battery. That's gonna give you your power. So you're gonna run a wire to this from your battery. The black wire, which is this right here, that is your ground. You're gonna just tighten that to some point on the car that is bare metal. It's called a chassis ground. So any bare metal piece, and by bare metal it means it's not painted, you're gonna just make sure that connects to that bare metal piece. And just to give you a good real life example, we have the positive wire connected to the positive side of the battery, and then if you get the negative side and attach it to a chassis ground, boom, you have light. Now if you want, you can put a switch in here. So the switch basically does this. It connects it to turn the light on and disconnects it to turn it off. That's all that is happening. It's that simple. All right, so the first thing we need to do is figure out where we're gonna install the bed lights. Now I spoke with the owner, Jacob, and he asked me to do a clean install. An install where you can't even tell there's aftermarket lights in here. So the idea is to do it very similarly to the way I did it with my truck. So we're gonna hide the LED lights underneath the bed rails. Now we'll be using a ribbon LED, and this is a 5630 LED, so it's very bright. It's a white color, and on the back it has double-sided tape. So this is gonna fit right up in here very nicely. We have a painted surface the double-sided tape will stick to, and that looks perfect right there. And now that we know where we're gonna put the LED lights, next you wanna lay them out in about the same area so you know you have enough. This is 16 feet worth of LED lights. And as you can see, as we make our way around the truck bed, we have just enough LED lighting to make it around this wide five and a half foot bed. So now that we know where we're gonna place the lights and that we have enough, let's install the lights. But before you attach the lights, it's very important to get isopropyl alcohol and clean the surface you're applying the lights to. If you don't clean the surface, the lights will not stick, so don't skip this step. Now we can take the LED light, peel off the cover from the double-sided tape, and let's stick the lights where we want them to go. And once you line it up, press down with some decent pressure so that it adheres to the surface completely and work your way around the truck bed. And coming to the corner here, I'm gonna tuck the lights right behind this plastic bed cover so it doesn't budge. All right, and that worked beautifully, but right now we're coming up to this part, which isn't painted anymore. It's actually a plastic bed liner 
it's textured, and it's a little bit oily. So you wanna make sure you clean it really well with that isopropyl alcohol before we try to stick this on. And I'm talking about really well, because I have a feeling this might not stick with the double-sided tape that's included on here. If that's the case, don't worry, I have a trick that we could use that'll definitely work. But right now, let's just try to get this to work. So clean this down really well. And moment of truth, let's adhere this to the plastic bed cover and see if it sticks. Now, I don't trust the double-sided tape on this plastic. It's gonna probably fall off over time. It's not holding on very well, so let me show you a little trick. So the trick to this is to use this VHB, very high bonding tape, which is a really strong double-sided tape that's way better than what the LED lights come with. And all you need to do is stick it onto the plastic bed cover like so, and already I could tell this is working way better. Just make sure you press it down with a good amount of pressure. And then we could peel off the protective backing and line up our LED strip and press it onto the very high bonding tape like so. And that is definitely not coming off. So that's nice and strong on there. Now you could do that for the whole thing if you want, but it's not necessary on any of the painted parts, just the tricky textured plastic parts. So let's continue to adhere the LED lights around the rest of the front of the bed. And then let's finish up along the driver's side of the bed, working our way to the rear of the truck. All right, so that is the end of our LED strip, and I'm gonna just leave this right here. But right now, we have a complete LED strip all the way around the bed, and that should light this up very nicely at night. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how we're gonna set all this up with the switch, with the uh, magnetic switch, and everything's gonna go behind here, so we need to take this off. In order to take this off, it's very simple. There should be two screws, there should be one down here. But there's only one holding this in, so let's unscrew that screw and get the tail light out. And the axis behind our tail light makes it really convenient to run all our wires right here. You can see this hole right here. That hole is factory, and that makes it awesome because I know the owner of the truck doesn't want me to drill any holes if I don't have to. So I'm gonna be able to put our switch right in that hole and it stays factory, that's great. And it's cool to make things work with what you have already. The less holes you have to drill, the better. And besides that hole right there for our switch, we also have another hole right back here, which our wires could go right through for the LED lights. So it's very convenient to work with the holes that we already have built into the chassis. So with our LED wires right back here, now we want to get our switch in place into that hole. So with the switch, we could take the wires off the back and we could unscrew the locking nut off the back. And then we could fit the switch into the stock hole. And the switch is a little too small for our hole. So an easy fix is to get a washer that fits on the switch like that and check it out. Now the switch fits into the hole nicely. So now we need to drill a hole in the bed liner so the switch could be accessed through that. And first, you wanna use a screwdriver or a pick to push a small pilot hole into the plastic bed liner so we know exactly where we need to drill. Now here's the drill bit that we're gonna be using. This is called a Christmas tree bit because, well, it looks like a Christmas tree. And it has different sizes on here that you could drill to. But we don't wanna go past our 5 8 of an inch size, which is right there. That's exactly the width of the outside of our switch. So 16 millimeters or 5 8 of an inch. And since this spins really quickly, it's very easy to lose track of how deep the drill bit is. So what I like to do is mark the bit with a nice bright color, like this green. So we know exactly how far to drill and we know we need to stop right there. Otherwise it's hard to tell and you could drill a hole that's too big and that wouldn't be good. Now we could use our pilot hole to accurately drill into the plastic and once the green is gone we are deep enough so we are done. Now we could test fit the switch and check it out. This fits perfect. So let's add a washer to the back of the switch and grab the lock nut and tighten it down and finally connect the wiring harness to the back. Alright so our switch is in there and check this out. Out. Look at how good that looks. It's flush in here. It looks completely stock. Look at that. That's beautiful. So what we're going to be doing is now we need to figure out how we're going to wire this up. And the benefit is when you buy it online, it comes with a wiring diagram. So we have a switch that does light up. So this is supposed to light up red, but the owner doesn't want it to light up at all. So the lights for the switch are this black wire and the red wire. So we could immediately remove those. Don't worry about those. Now we have two green wires. One of the green wires has a black and green. And then we have a white ground. So the white ground we need, and then the black and green and the green are the ones we have to figure out what we're going to be doing. So with just the straight green, when you press it, that means it's on. And we don't want that. We want it to be on all the time, and we want it to be off when you press it. So to do that, 
off when you press it is the green and black wire. And if we come over here, you can see we have the green and black wire right here that we need. We have our white ground wire. And then the other wires that we don't need are all tied up. And I'm gonna just move those off to the side since we don't need them. So here's the two wires that we need. We're set here. So now we could go and install our magnetic switch. And I have it set up on a multimeter so I could show you guys how this is gonna work. This right here is the magnetic switch. And here is the other end, which is a magnet. Right now, when these magnets are separated, the circuit is closed, so it's getting power. The bed lights will be on. So when this comes close, the circuit will open and we won't have power to the lights. So you open the bed, you've got power. You close the bed, the power cuts off. That's exactly what we want. And then we have the switch, which cuts all power no matter what. Just in case you leave your tailgate open because you have something big in it, you won't have the LED lights on. So now we need to find the place to put these where when the tailgate is open, it's separated, and when it's closed, it's close and opens the circuit. So we want the magnet that's separated from the wire, the one that doesn't have wires attached to it, to be on the tailgate because this is what's gonna move back and forth. We don't want the wires to move back and forth constantly, it'll wear out faster. So this is gonna go on the tailgate somewhere, probably down here. So I'm thinking right down here, I'm just gonna place it right here for now. I'm not gonna stick it on with sticky tape, just use the magnetic force to hold it in place. That looks perfect. And since this spot is good, we're gonna use it for the magnet, but first clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol. Then we can peel the backing off of the double-sided tape and stick it on there. Now we have to get the other side with the wire connected and place it over here somewhere so that we know it works. So I'm gonna use some tape so that we could test it out instead of taking the double-sided tape off. I'm just gonna estimate where it needs to be. And I'm gonna say right about here. So let's try it out. So when this multimeter goes to one, that means there is an open circuit. It means there's no power to the lights. So we're gonna close the bed. And that didn't work, so I actually noticed that we need to lift this up just a little bit. And that's why we do this trial and error with the tape, because we know we need to lift it up a little bit. So let's actually put it right there, because it's a nice flat surface. When the bed closes, that means we have no power to the lights. Beautiful, they're turned off. And then when the bed opens, this should move, the numbers should change. Now we have power to the lights, and that's exactly what we wanna see. So we want it right about there. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but that's good. So now before we stick this on, clean it with some isopropyl alcohol so we have a good clean surface. Then we can peel the tape off and stick it on right there. And if you notice, the wire is pointing downwards. That's because right here is a gap, and this could be snaked up through the gap to the tail lights, which is perfect. Now, instead of just running the wire up through here, because you'll get a chafing effect, and that'll cut the wire over time, you wanna make sure that you use some type of wire protector, like a wire loom like this. So run the wire through the loom so it's protected. And you see how the end of the wire protector gets frayed? And over time, this will come apart. Well, a little trick with this is to use black tape, or even better, heat shrink, place it over the end, and heat shrink it down. Just like that. Now look at how much better this looks. So now we could run the protected wire through the slot in the bed, up into the tail light where the rest of the wires are. Now with this all set up, the last thing we need to do is run a power wire so we can power our lights back here. And in order to do that, we need to go all the way to the front here, all the way to the battery, which is located on the passenger side, and we're gonna tap into here. So we're gonna go from the battery across the front of the car, all the way down the side. So now I'm gonna give this to Jacob. We're gonna test to see how long the wire is, how much we need. Good, you're at the end. Then Yuri's gonna hold this right here. And that is how much wire we're gonna need. So now let's start our wiring so we could power our LED lights. And it's very simple. We're gonna start here at the positive terminal. We're gonna disconnect this bolt right here, just like that. And with this little kit I have, we're gonna grab a ring terminal like that. And this should fit on the positive terminal right here like that, beautiful. Now before we wire this up, you never wanna connect your wire that's going to the LEDs directly to the battery. That is a bad idea. You need a fuse in between. Otherwise, if something shorts out, you could start a fire and that wouldn't be good. So always use something like this. This is an inline fuse. So if anything happens, the fuse will blow and we don't have to worry about a fire. So let's get our heat shrink on here. And I always forget to add the heat shrink, so don't forget it. Then let's put our ring terminal on here. And finally, we could crimp it down nice and tight for a good solid connection. Then I like to add some silicone paste onto the end, which will make the connection waterproof and prevent corrosion. Then slide the heat shrink over it like that and use a heat gun to shrink it down onto the wire and terminal. Now we could go and install this onto the positive terminal here. So hand tighten the nut onto the terminal, snug it up, and then place the rubber insulator over the terminal. 
Now we don't have to remove the battery cable and we could do this because there's no fuse in here. Since there's no fuse, the circuit is open and we could touch the other end to the ground and it won't ground out. So keep the fuse out. The fuse is the last thing we're gonna install. Now we're gonna connect our fused end wire to our wire we're running to the back of the truck and let me show you how to properly do that. And to make this easier, there's something called helping hands that hold the wires in place and it just makes your job so much easier because you don't have to fumble around trying to keep the wires close to each other. Now there's two different ways we could connect these wires. The first way is to use a butt connector that crimps. It'll crimp down and then you can heat shrink it. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do that here just so you can see how this way works. The other method is to use a soldering gun and some solder and put these wires together that way. That's also a good way to do it and that'll be the second method and I'll show you that method as well. And both of these methods are okay to use. It depends what you want to do and what access you have to different tools. Now with these crimp on butt connectors you have a split down the middle. So you want to trim the copper part of the wire so it reaches just up to the split. Now we could push the wire into the crimp like so. And on the wire crimpers, you want to use the insulated part of the crimpers, not the non-insulated. The insulated part will prevent the heat shrink from getting damaged when you crimp it down. So with the insulated part of the crimpers, crimp down pretty hard so we have a good secure connection. And when you're done, always test the connection by trying to pull it apart. Now do the same thing to the other side. Push the wire in, crimp it, and test it. Good, now we could use the heat gun to shrink the heat shrink down onto the wires and make a waterproof connection like that. And now we can run our wiring to the back of the truck. But before you run any wires, you don't want to run it bare like this because if it rubs against any metal, it could chafe. And then you could have a short and it'll blow your fuse. So what you want to do? You want to use some type of wire shielding. So something that's made of plastic or rubber that'll protect the wires. So this has a split in it like that. And you slip the wire right into the split and you feed the wire into the wire loom until the entire wire is protected. Then you could grab the black electrical tape and tape the end by the fuse so it doesn't move. All right, so with our wire completely protected and shielded, now we could run this to the back of the truck. And it's actually gonna be pretty simple because we have our factory wiring harness right here, which has the wires that go to the tailgate. So we're just gonna follow this. But if you don't have this, you wanna just make sure you don't go near any hot exhaust pipes, anything that moves like a drive shaft or your suspension. And you're gonna wanna use plenty of zip ties so that you don't have to worry about this coming loose. So let's get started. You wanna make this look real good. You wanna tuck it in and make it look factory. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So we'll start by tucking it under the factory wiring harness up here so it's out of the way. Next, we're gonna follow the factory harness down under the air box and cool an overflow tank and bring it up by the brake master cylinder. So our wire now goes under both the air box and the coolant overflow tank and comes up right over here. Next, we're gonna snake it above the fender liner to the underside of the truck. And at the underside of the truck, just follow the factory wiring harness. And it's a good idea to secure the wire with a zip tie to the factory harness so it doesn't hang down or come loose. So I think you get it by now. Continue to follow the factory harness to the rear where the tail light is. And zip tie the new harness to the factory harness so it's out of the way of all the moving parts. So we went up and over the axle, right next to the frame, all the way back, behind the tire, around, through the frame rail here, and now this is gonna get fished right up through that hole, and that goes directly to the tail light. And this is where having those safety glasses on will prevent that falling dirt from getting into your eyes. Now we could just dig into our tail light and grab our power wire that we snaked up here. Beautiful, there we go. So now we have all the wires that we need to wire this up completely and get a functioning bed light. So let's finish it up. Now taking a quick look at our schematic here, so we have the power going to the red wire on our LED, and then our black wire on the LED goes to the green wire on the switch, which goes to a black wire on the magnetic switch, which goes to the ground. So let's do the easiest one, and that is the red wire, which is coming from the battery, goes to the red wire to the LED. And that is this wire right here, and this wire right here. And now we're not gonna use a crimp connector like I just did before. We're gonna solder these together. So let me show you how to do that. So grab your helping hands, and we wanna place both red power wires into the helping hands so we could solder them. And I almost forgot, make sure you slide the heat shrink over one of the ends of the wire. And now we wanna twist the thinner of the two wires around the thicker wire so we have a nice solid connection even without the solder. And it should look something like this. Now place the soldering gun at the bottom of the strands 
and place the solder at the top and we want to melt the solder through the strands for the best connection. If you guys want to learn more about soldering, I have a really good in-depth video that'll walk you through everything. I'll link it in the description, that way you can check it out and learn more. Now we could add our silicone grease to make a waterproof and corrosion free connection. Slide the heat shrink over it and use a heat gun to shrink it down. And that is all there is to getting a good soldered connection like that. It's waterproof, it has good conductivity, and that's good to go. So now let's go solder the rest of the wires. So the last couple of wires we need to do, we just did the red wire on the light, now we need to get the black wire to the green wire on the switch. So black wire to green wire like that. So same process, solder the wires together, add the silicone, and heat shrink it for a good seal. All right, so our green to our ground on our light is done. Now we have to go white, which is the switch white, to our magnetic switch black. Either one works, and we need to solder those two together. And I think you get it by now. Solder it, silicone it, heat shrink it. Beautiful, and that is our last soldered connection. Now the last thing we need to do, so we just soldered that right there, we need to do the ground. So this wire from our magnetic switch is the last loose wire we have, and this has to touch some bare metal. So I looked around and right away I saw right at this bolt is bare metal. This is the end of the bolt that supports the tailgate. And you always want a good clean connection for your ground, so always sand it down even if it looks like it's good and clean. Now I have the exposed end of the wire doubled up and we'll put it in the nut and thread it to the bolt to squeeze the wire against the bolt, just like that. All right, so we're all done wiring this up. We followed our diagram perfectly. We have our power wire going to the power on the lights. We have our ground wire going to a switch, going to another switch, so we could turn it on and off if we want to. And when the bed opens and closes, it turns on and off as well. Last thing to do, let's get this tail light in place. Tighten that top screw by hand and snug it up with a ratchet to hold the light in place. And don't worry, I found a screw that replaces the bottom missing screw as well. And with the tail light in our switch in, there's one more thing to do. Let's close this tailgate and go to the front of the truck. And at the front of the truck, the last thing to do is add our fuse. Now when you're adding a fuse, make sure you use a fuse that is a little bit higher than the amp load. So the amp load on those lights is five amps. This is a 10 amp fuse, that's the next one up. If you want, you could probably get away with using a 7.5, but 10 amps is perfect. So just click this in, close that up, and with that, we are done. So now normally I would go and test this out myself before I show Jacob because, you know, you want to make sure it works. But I feel like the excitement would be a lot more if we waited for nighttime. So let's make it nighttime. All right, Jacob, here we go. This is always the nerve wracking part because, well, I mean, you wire everything out correctly, like what you expect it to be, but you don't know if it's actually going to work. And here's the moment of truth. Let's shut off our lights. Oh. Woo! Look at that. Amazing. Look at that. That looks so good. That's so bright. Now you're never going to have a problem finding something in there at night. <laughs> now let's check out and make sure the button works. Boom. Wow. Close it up. Let's see if it shuts off. Oh, That's so good. That's the coolest. Wait, wait. Let me add some more light. All right. We're good now. Boom. That's amazing. Sweet. And there we go, we put the tonneau cover back on because that's how he normally has his truck. And look at that, that looks so good. I just, ah, it's so nice to be able to do something like this and get results like this. It's so rewarding. And there you go. So thank you very much, Straight Pipes, for coming out here. I'm glad I got to work on your truck, got you some bed lights. As always, I hope the video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button. And all the tools and products I used in this video are linked in the description. So check them out.